your alternative talk radio contact, the planet, KGRARadio.com. With infinite complacency, people went to and fro of the earth about their little affairs, serene in the assurance of their dominion over this small, binning fragment of solar driftwood, which by chance or design, man has inherited out of the dark mystery of time and space. It's funny. I decided to make a list, a list of talking points that I wanted to go over, and as I was writing this stuff down, it occurred to me that, wow, I'm really not normal, am I? Because <laughs> I, I think most people kind of have this idea of, you know, that not necessarily that they're normal. I don't think most people think of themselves as normal, but they're kind of the baseline for what they experience. Right. So I didn't really think of what I've had happened to me is too far out of the norm. But as I've been writing this stuff down, I've gone, holy crap, there's a lot here. So there is one story in particular I wanted to touch on, and I think that's what I originally contacted you about was about the shadow people. Uh huh. So, uh, yeah, where would you like me to begin with that? Um, actually, yeah, wherever you want. Okay, so uh, this, has, this has bugged me for a number of years. I've I've had experiences since I was about 14 or so with strange sleep phenomena, I guess you could say. Uh, Out-of-body experiences, sleep paralysis, so on and so forth. And when I hit 18, I, I think it was 18, somewhere around the 17, 18 area, I had fallen asleep one night. It was pretty early for me. Uh, it was, you know, evening. And I remember... Well, I, it's not that's not the, word, the right word to use here because I, I woke up this way. But I had fallen asleep with the light sort of on but very dim. And this this is an important detail, and you'll see why later. But I fell asleep with the light on, very dim, uh, pretty dark room. Dark enough to cast pretty decent shadows, uh, not dark enough to be totally dark. And I had and I'm, I'm hesitant to call it a dream, but I, I was taken up to this... I, I, I don't want to say it was a ship. I don't want to say it was a station. I, I don't want to call this an, abduct, an abduction experience even, but I was aboard this thing. I, I, I somehow had a view of the Earth from outer space, and there were these four shadow people there in this structure, enclosure, whatever you want to call it. And they had me viewing a screen. And on that screen, at first I saw the Earth, and then I watched the evolution of the human race 4,000 years into the future. Now, what I, what I mean by that is not, you know, any political developments or anything like that, no, no nukes going off or anything, but the biological evolution of a human from now until 4,000 years, which... Shouldn't really be all that much, but I remember some pretty freaky, weird changes. Mm. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Uh, and it's strange, because I, I can't remember any details. I just remember the general shape and physiology changing before me. So I, I, was, I was sat down and made to watch that by these, these shadows. And I, I think it's interesting, because a, a lot of what I hear about the shadow people is there's some kind of malevolence behind them and I, I know you've had your own experiences with those so but what was what was your read on them oh i mean mine was not nearly as interactive as what you just described i mean i saw them for five seconds and they were uh they were running in the woods so uh and they didn't interact with me at all oh this is out in the woods that's that's interesting yeah and it was huh. the, the middle of the day uh, and I apologize, my cough is trying to come back at the worst possible times right now as I'm speaking. So if I sound a little funny, I'm trying to fight it off. Um, 
<laughs> but uh, yeah, it was middle of the day. So, uh, and it was when I was younger. So, you know, this isn't a situation of, oh, Shannon's, you know, having some Jack Daniels or whatever and seeing shadow people. It was when I was younger. So, uh, but no, it was not interactive at all. They didn't even, I didn't even get the impression that they even glanced over at me. Huh. Okay. That's interesting. Um, so what kind of changes did you notice as far as you, you mentioned these physiological changes or the, uh, you know, is, are you talking about to us uh, as a, a human being, like as far as our anatomy goes? Yeah. As, as far as our anatomy goes. And it's, it's really frustrating that I can't remember details. I just remember seeing our faces and bodies change. And I, I remember getting the impression, uh, this, this deeply, I, I almost want to say sort of psychic impression that it was very important. What I was being made to watch was very important, which is strange to me considering I can't remember any of it, except, you know, the, the basics of, yeah, people changed. So... <laughs> Pardon me, sorry. This is going to be a tough one for me with my cough coming back. So, I mean, what what happened after you watched the video? Did you just zip your right back and... Oh, oh, no. No, it got very interesting after that. Then I was taken, I guess you could say, aboard a boat. An old rickety wooden boat. Uh, and this was on a planet that I somehow knew... Was I, I, I knew this was not Earth. I, I didn't know where it was. I just knew it was not Earth. I, I got the impression, the very strong impression, that these, these shadow beings... My, my ex has had experiences with these as well, and she's called them shadow walkers. I think I mentioned that in the email yeah. to you. Uh, so that's a term that's kind of stuck with me. But uh, I, I got the very strong impression that this was a very important place to them. And I was brought here. Very stormy, overcast, sort of a dark navy hue over everything, like navy, grayish. And I was on this old rickety wooden boat with these four shadow beings still, <clears throat> excuse me, still right beside me, or behind me, beside me, whatever. And <sighs> there was an old lady on the boat with me. Uh... I, I, I hesitate to use the term in this manner because I, I, I know a fair number of witches who are very, you know, very young, attractive people. Right. But this this was an old lady, and I, I guess you could say she was sort of the stereotypical, you know, witch that you would see in, you know, fiction, old movies, books, whatever. Uh, she, she didn't have a hat on or anything, but she was dressed in black robes and kind of kind of wrinkled face, very long, gray, scraggly hair. A uh, little longer than shoulder length, and she began to proclaim to whoever I don't know if it was to me or the shadows or if she was just sort of saying this, but she was she was very proud of the fact that she could set herself on fire but not burn, and she proceeded to douse herself in gasoline and light her hair on fire. So, I'm standing on the deck of this rickety old boat, rain pouring down on top of us, and her, her hair is just completely engulfed in flames, but her skin is not burning, and she's, she's laughing maniac uh, mani maniacally. She's very proud of this fact that she's not burning. And this goes on for about anywhere from two to three minutes, until she suddenly does begin to burn, and she started to scream and jumped over the edge of the boat into what I at the time had thought was water. So I dived in after her. What I dived into wasn't water. I, I don't know what it was, but I immediately understood that it was the same thing that these shadow creatures were made from. It was... It was like drowning, but I wasn't drowning in water. It was like drowning in a very thick, gaseous sort of... It, 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 was, it was gas that was heavy enough to swim through, 
Does that make sense? Yes, absolutely. Now, Justin, just yeah. to interrupt you real quick. I mean, are you are you feeling like this is definitely a dream state that you're in? Uh, at at this point, I'm pretty certain it's a dream. But then, what happens after? L- 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 let's say retrospectively, I don't believe this to be a dream, and really? you'll see why. Okay. So, I'm diving after this woman. And she's getting further and further away from me. I can't see very well through this stuff at all. And I'm just diving through it. My lungs are filling with it. And what, what, whatever it is, it, you know, it's some kind of air, but I can't breathe it. It's very thick. It's very heavy. I feel like I'm drowning in smoke, shadow, gas. I, I, I don't have a good descriptor for it. Uh, I, I believe I referred to it at one point to a friend of mine as the, the ether. So I was just drowning in this. And diving after this woman trying to get her. But I, I couldn't. And you, you, I'm sure you've had dreams where we've all had dreams where we've drowned. And, you know, you, you shoot up awake and you can't breathe, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So I shot up awake like this, gasping for air in my bed. It's very dimly lit. And for whatever reason, as I catch my breath, I, something made me turn around, and Shannon, at the foot of my bed, there were the four shadow people. They were right there. They, they were right there, made of the same substance, and as I looked at them, they immediately just dissipated into this black gas and just sort of faded outwards into my room. Wow, so at that point, you know for a fact that you're awake, but it completely ties into what you did see in your dream state. Yes. It gets weirder. Oh. Remember how at the very beginning I, I made it a point to say that the room was dimly lit. Yes. Now, you know when you stare at a very bright light for too long, you get an after image burned into your eyes, right? Mm-hmm. I had an after image burned into my eyes. Where the hell did that come from? And this after image was of this sort of this glyph, this symbol, that I immediately hopped onto my computer and I, I made a quick mock-up of it when I saw this. So th- that, that's two things that happened at once that were very physical. These things were in my room. I was awake. I was sober. They were there. And they dissipated. And there was also this afterimage burned in my eyes. So what did the glyph mean? Did Were you able to research that? I've been researching it for, well, how long has it been now? I'm 25, seven years. And nobody I've spoken to has any idea what the hell it is. No. Uh, I can send it to you if you'd I like. Would, I would love that. Would you mind if I, um, you know, I put it in the show notes and whatnot? Maybe. Sure, absolutely. Comes... Cool, thank you. Uh, how should I send this? Over email or Skype or what? Yeah, email would probably be the best. And then once okay. the show airs, I can put that in the show notes. And I can also, you know, plunk it on Facebook and stuff. And you never know who might come across it and have some information. No, yeah, absolutely. Uh, I'm actually a 3D modeler. I do a lot of uh, a lot of work with starships, and a couple of friends of mine have suggested just like, hey, you know, you should put this on one of your ships. You know, maybe something will happen. I well, so. uh, yeah. Uh, I mean, some of the, of course, some people call them sigils. You know, yeah, there's intent behind it, and it's something you focus on, and it makes things happen. And um, so, something like a glyph. Uh, especially tied into your kind of an experience. Uh, that is very interesting. You never know what that might mean. Yeah, no, this is this is a very petty reason for not having done that, but I just haven't uh, done a piece of art that it really would have fit on so far. But maybe I should make it a point to do that. Um, damn, I'm sorry about this. I lost a hard drive recently, so I'm having to navigate through no, all my backups here. No, no, that's here. okay. No, that's all right. You, you don't have to actually do it right this moment. Um, okay, I can send it afterwards. Yeah, then. thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, I, I've got all kinds of people out there, uh, very smart, uh, deaf people, and uh, they know a lot more than I do, that's for sure. So maybe if we, we throw that out there in the ether, it, it may come back with an answer. Yeah, so... For a long time, I believed this experience to be kind of like a one-off. I felt different afterwards. I, 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 was, I was very shaken, but I was also kind of exhilarated. I, I got a very strong impression from these beings. that they, they, they never spoke to me. They never communicated with me. 
but I was getting impressions from them. I, I guess I was just kind of like reading their aura, reading their energy, whatever, the entire time. And I, I got the feeling that I was sort of being tested. Like, th that the entire thing was a test to see if I would dive after the woman, to see if... I'm, I'm not even sure if catching her was a big deal, but more the fact that if I would do it. That's, yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. And I, I, I don't know, there was always just this, it felt like it meant something, but I had nothing to corroborate that until, uh, God, how many, how many years have it been in the last year? So un until six years later, when I did. Now, uh, w without diving into it too much, I, I have a heart condition. I do, I do have an arrhythmia, which sucks, but you know, whatever. And last year, I moved across the country. Uh, I'm, I'm from Pennsylvania. I'm currently in Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. But I, I moved out to Taos, New Mexico for a number of months with my aunt and uncle. Four days after moving there, I uh, checked into the hospital with my heart racing because it had been racing all day. And the doctor... I'm, I'm, I'm not going to name any names here. I'm not even going to say the name of the hospital, but they yeah. administered the wrong drug. Oh, my God. Yeah. And I died. I was clinically dead for a good portion of time there. Justin, oh, my gosh. Um, I don't even know well, what to say to that, that you are <laughs> the last person that they should be giving the wrong medicine to or drug to in the hospital yeah uh i i could i could dive further into that situation but i i i won't no for it's okay reasons but the, the the point is what happened when this happened so i i was clinically dead for an undefined period of time interestingly they, they don't even have records of how long i was dead i'm very upset about that so i don't how, know how, how long can I was that out. even be possible that they don't have a record of that that's why I said I'm not going to name that this hospital so or weird. the doctors involved. Okay, yeah, involved. totally, absolutely. Yeah. I just that is uh, that would be infuriating. I can't even imagine being you and going, "How in the hell do you not have that notated?" I I feel I I feel violated. I actually feel violated. Well, it I, sounds I mean, like I'm, they were I'm, trying I'm to cover their there. ass. Yeah, I'm I'm sitting there with you know this this IV jacked into my arm. Yeah. And I'm I'm saying no, this isn't the right medicine. I, I was actually uh, training to become a paramedic at the time. Oh and my I've, god, I've you had were telling them. For, yeah, and I, I've had this condition for about oh. four years before this happened. No, this is the wrong medicine. Don't do this. And they just went ahead and do it, did it anyway. Um, but all, all that all that horrible stuff aside. Something very interesting happened when I was unconscious. Well, unconscious, dead. My heart stopped. I was very relaxed. I became very relaxed and very calm. And images just started drifting before me. And I felt myself sinking. Just sinking slowly, really just... You know, the feeling after, like, you know, a hard day of work, just laying down in bed, and you just feel yourself kind of sink into the bed, kind of like that. Yeah. And it was it was a lot like that. But Shannon, the stuff I was sinking into was the same stuff that I had dived into six oh. years earlier to save that woman. Wow. Yeah. Something undefinable. Yeah. Mm. I, I I don't really know what to do with that information, right. but I've I've always had a very strong impression that all of this is somehow sort of tied together. And yeah, I, I didn't even realize what it was at first because I was so shaken up. It took it, it, it took me talking to my friend a year later, recounting the same experience to go, holy crap, that was the same stuff. Yeah, I don't, I, okay, so, obviously this is, I've never 
been clinically dead. So this might sound like a really stupid question. There, there, there are no um, stupid questions here. Go ahead. I, yeah, I wasn't quite expecting that part of the story. So I apologize. And I'm so sorry that will happen to you. Are you, this sounds so stupid to ask this because it's so counterintuitive, but were you conscious of what was going on at this time? Or is this in retrospect, once you woke up, you remembered all of that? Does that make sense? That is such a hard question. I don't know how to describe the state I was in when I was out. I, I was I was perceiving things, mm -hmm. but my mind wasn't processing any of it. it it's it's like all I could do was observe. I and th that e even that doesn't begin to. It wasn't like a sleep paralysis where you're conscious and thinking, oh my god, oh my god, while right. observing and you can't do anything. No, I, I wasn't even able to think. I was just watching all of this happen. No, that, that makes sense. That makes sense. And I apologize for that question. I, I No, no, no. It's, it's a good question. Man, I don't... That's... I was not expecting that. Um, yeah. Okay, so, I mean, what, what next? Well, uh, <laughs> I shot up awake, and, and this isn't really relevant to the shadow people at all, but just to, to, to wrap up the story, just so you know how all this resolved itself, I, I sat up, and I, I wish I had had more dignified words, but, uh, I, I shot up, and the, the strangest thing happened. Um, I, I don't know if this is something that most people experience when they die or what, but when I shot up awake, everything sort of... My, my vision reoriented itself from my peripheral vision. Everything kind of like came back in from the edges of my vision, recentering, and I shot up awake, and I, I looked around and I said, what the hell just happened? <laughs> so were you still in, in that goo when you woke back up? No, no, it was, it was gone. Okay. Uh, the, the, the only three times I can say I've seen it was during the dream state when I dived into it. In my room when I watched the shadow people made of it dissipate. And when I was unconscious. So what's the last thing you remember you were doing before you woke back up? I, I wasn't really doing anything. I was just sinking deeper and deeper. And I, okay. I remember how how calming it felt. And I remember just observing just images floating before me. M mostly memories. So did they give you another drug to counteract the drug that they shouldn't <laughs> give you in the first place? Or, I mean, how yeah, did, how'd they get funny, you Yeah, funny story about that. I, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure how much of this I'm allowed to say over the, the, the air. Like, what, what's, what's, what's the deal here? Are, are we still going by the, the old, uh, you, you know, the, the seven words or however many it is you can't say on the air? What's, what's the deal with your, your show? I mean, I guess... If you just throw it out there, and if I think I need to, you know, bleep it out, I will. But oh, for the okay. most part, it's very laid back here. So you okay, say what okay. you need to say. Fair enough. That's Absolutely. kind of the impression I got from watching your show. Uh, God. So if if I recall, I, I, I told the doctor to uh, take his drugs and shove them up his ass. <laughs> you are absolutely, completely allowed to say that, and I'm yeah. so glad that you did. <laughs> to him, no, I mean. I, I'm, I'm, I'm glad so you glad, said glad that, that I him. did, too, because I, yeah. I'm still here, and I'm not sure I would have been if, right, if right. not for that. Right. I think that uh, the scary thing about hospitals is uh, people don't realize that there are many more accidents and oopsies in hospitals, just like we all have at our everyday jobs. But the difference there is an oopsie there may cost someone their life. Yeah, that it's definitely a thing. And I, I remember for a while there, I, I have some pretty bad anxiety, not necessarily social anxiety so much. Like I'm, I'm not having any issue doing this, but health anxiety. I have a lot of health anxiety. You know, big shocker, right? So hospitals are really a place I used to feel safe in. 
and now it's it's just the complete opposite. So, uh, yeah, Justin, I think you're allowed to feel that way now. <laughs> I'm, yeah, I'm, I, and I'm not laughing because I think it's funny. I no, just, I'm no, shocked. I, no. I am shocked. I was not expecting that. My my father had this thing he said when uh, he he should have gone to the hospital one time and he didn't. His his complaint was, I I don't want to go to a hospital. People die in hospitals, and I was like, yeah, Dad, you know, no, people get saved in hospitals too, but. Yeah, I can kind of understand his concerns now. Yeah, but, I, I, I would say so. Yeah, I, I definitely have more stuff to touch on here if we have time. How much time oh, do we yeah, have? no, no, you're good. Yeah, please keep going. Thank you so much. All right, let me pop open my notes real fast here. Yeah, absolutely. We uh, all have them. We oh, all have the notes. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Wow. Um, okay, that, that leads in really well. Dad. I, I just mentioned my dad. My father has had experiences. Uh, I, I, I am of the opinion, this is just my opinion. Well, the, the first part's going to be less than opinion. I, I, I believe that there's fairly solid evidence that points towards some people are more receptive of certain energies than others. Would you generally be in agreement with that? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, the, the, the more opinion oriented part of this is that I, I believe a part of that may be genetic. Uh, my father has definitely had some pretty freaky experiences. Uh, he's, he's not like me at all in a lot of ways. We, we get along well, but we're very different people. He's a very outdoorsy person. Uh, I'm, you know, I, I work with computers. He works with cars and spends a lot of time in the woods. Yeah. And, uh, you, you don't like the woods so much or. Oh no, I, I dig the woods. I just don't really get out as often as I'd like to. Um, but yeah. Uh, God, that, that funny you should mention that. That was actually one of the reasons I hated living out house was no trees. I couldn't yeah. deal with it. Vegas kind of bums me out like that because, um, I mean, I grew up here, but once I moved, I always I had a stint in Seattle area for a couple years. I came back and then I went to Ohio for a couple years and I'll, I just miss the trees. You know, I miss having cloudy rainy days and um i don't miss the snow of ohio i don't and i'll you know people have heard me say that before but gosh i miss going camping and just seeing green greenery yeah yeah it gets really old just seeing the same old you know dusty shit all the time yeah and it's sunny and clear every effing day and i'm like and people are listening to this right now, and it's probably 15 degrees, and they're going, you know what? You're <laughs> yeah. an asshole for saying that. It's yeah, 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 poo, yeah. Poor Shannon, meh. But it's true. Uh, sometimes I do miss just a change sometimes. Well, I, I think I think our terrains were a little different, because you, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure exactly where you are. I'm, I'm not asking, but I, I, I was actually up in the high desert in Taos, New Mexico, almost yes. on the border. Colorado. Yes. So I, I actually witnessed snow in May. Oh, that's cool. Well, see, yeah. now, I didn't know Taos could get snow in May. That's pretty cool. I wouldn't have guessed yeah. that. I, I know that Taos is different than than Vegas, but I that is a very uh, interesting aspect to it. Taos is just different in general. Taos is a strange place. Uh, they, they they have the Taos hum there. Not sure if you're familiar with that. I I have heard of that. They actually have quite a bit of. Uh, oddities in Taos. I could probably do oh, a couple yes. few episodes on Taos they alone. Do. Uh, so you how, know, I, how I, long I would were you there for, that. Justin? Five months. I was there for five months, and I did my first uh, semester of college there, and I, okay. I kind of had a bit of falling out with my aunt. Yeah. I had to move back here. But uh, anyway, I do feel we're getting a little bit off track here. We've got my dad's experiences, which I wanted to get into. Yes, please do. My, my, my father has seen things. My father has... Uh, He's he's seen what I guess you would describe as Foo Fighters over the Delaware River. Oh, cool! Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah those big orange balls. He's he's seen those. He he saw those when he was on a motorcycle with his buddy Ross, and they were they were blasting up uh, the you know, God, I I can't say River Road for some reason. There we go, River Road, and this thing was just you know going along the the river, and he he doesn't know what it was. He thinks it might have been something military because you know we're pretty close to Willow Grove, or yeah, you know. They were. I'm. I'm not really in that area anymore. But 
Uh, I, I I don't know what the hell it was, but he's seen more than that. He's seen things out in the woods which have stopped and looked at him. I, I, I wish I could remember how he described this creature that stopped and looked at him. That that was when he was living in Texas. So uh, uh, a creature uh, closer to a Bigfoot or a creature closer to like a Mothman or Jersey Devil? You know, like... Uh, creature closer to like... <sighs> how to describe it i i remember he said it had like a sort of ginger ochre colored fur sort of and very bright yellow eyes mm. uh yeah it was it was definitely furry i can tell you that much it wasn't super big it wasn't like a big foot it was probably more like human sized mm, i wonder what that was so human sized yeah. furry ginger fur mm-hmm. and uh light eye so like glowing eyes i i don't I can't remember if they were glowing, but I, I do remember that they were very yellow. Mm. The heck was that, right? Yeah, right? But I, I think the most freaky experience he had that bothers me to this day is that him and my mother were driving up, I, I, I want to say it was Swamp Road in uh, Bucks County, Pennsylvania, where I grew up. It, oh, it you might grew have, up in Bucks but, County. Yes, I did. Bucks and County is significance. full of stuff. Yes. Oh, yes. Amazing. So Swamp Road, I'm sorry to interrupt you. No, no, no problem at all. So they were, I, I think it was Swamp. I might be wrong, but a lot of strange things have happened on Swamp Road anyway. So yes, they were, they were going up Swamp Road and these lights appeared before their car. This was like 10 o'clock at night. And, and this was, this was back in like, you know, what, whatever the, the seventies, I guess. So this this is a pretty undeveloped area at this point. There's not a lot of people out there. And suddenly these lights just descend on their car. Just these glowing, I think they were like pale yellow balls in front of their car. And they just stopped and hovered there. And my father was like, okay, we need to go. And they drove the hell out of there. And the really interesting thing is, my mother at the time, my father is certain that she saw them and acknowledged them. And my mother has no recollection of it today. Really? Yeah. Do you think that's because it scared her, so she doesn't want to talk about it? Well, it's it's hard to say with my mom. My mom is... <sighs> I, I don't feel like she's altogether there these days um, oh, without getting into too I'm much sorry. detail. Drugs are not yeah. a nice thing yeah. um but both both my parents are druggies but i feel my father kind of manages it better so uh, j just to put it on record here i i am not i'm very sober i was sober at the time of all these incidents that occurred uh i i don't I, i've yeah you know, I've, I've gotten absolutely drunk off my ass a couple of times i think we all have but i'm not sure i've ever really had any experiences while i was drunk right um, well, and some yeah. people believe that if you're using, actually, you're less likely to have anything actually even try to contact you. It kind of acts like a, a blocker in a way. Yeah, y you know, people say that both ways that they say, you know, oh, it's it's a gateway. It lets right. them in and they other blame people it say, on you know, it blocks blocker. it out. Yeah, uh, I, I can't really attest to either of those two things. What I believe is a gateway, what I believe lets these phenomena in, and I'm, I'm just going to use the term phenomena because I, I really genuinely feel that this all kind of falls under one roof. Yeah. Uh, are, actually, here's a question. Are, are you familiar with Tom DeLonge at all? Yes, I am. Yeah. So if you're familiar with Tom DeLonge's philosophy on all this, this is all kind of, it all sort of falls under one roof. That's kind of where I'm at with this at this point. Yeah, I've been, I've, I think I've been feeling that way for quite a long time that somehow it's all tied in. I just don't think that we have the capabilities to figure it out right now. We just don't have enough puzzle pieces. Yeah, I, I used to be really big on the, oh, aliens, aliens are so cool, blah, 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 blah aliens. Now it's like, you know, I, I, I don't know what to believe anymore. I, I, I saw some footage once of, um, I, I can't remember the name of the project, but it was some project they were doing. I think it was in the UK to contact the, the undead. Well, the, the 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 dead, what they would term as the undead ghosts, basically. Uh, they they were trying to contact the the departed is the term I would use, 
and they they stuck this recorder in a dark room or something, and uh, they, they they left it go. And I'm I'm not talking about a voice recorder. I'm talking about video. And I'm I'm not sure you've ever seen this, but they 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 got what was definitively a gray alien on video from this experiment contact. <laughs> Ghost. I was coughing. Is that the one outside the window? Um, I can't remember. I, I don't think it was outside a window. Like, oh, okay. I, I'm I'm pretty sure this footage was actually sealed while they were recording. Oh. Yeah. I I, I wish I could find it again. I'm gonna have, have to dig to that. Try to look that up. Yeah, they they did some other experiments too. That they did the obvious. Uh, what's the term I'm looking for? Where you you know set the recorder on and try to record the the voice. EVPs. Um, yeah, they, they they did EVP. That they did something with um, pennies as well, trying to like get oh, this doing thing the to... like the either like having it a port somewhere else. Yes, yes, yes. The the the, the apportions. Yes. Yeah. And they they also stuck this footage in a camera and let it run in this dark room after, you know, in, in invoking a whole bunch of stuff. And I, I swear to God, what I saw in that footage was a gray alien. So hmm. that that le- leads me to believe, you know, what what the hell is a gray? What the hell is a ghost? You know, what where's where do we draw the line? Yeah, it always threw me off in some of the alien abduction encounters you hear when they that they they saw a gray in their room and they go in the name of jesus you know or or, in the name of christ you shall be gone and then they actually left i'm kind of going well why would an alien care about you invoking jesus or mentioning jesus right yeah i've i've got feelings on that um no tell me yeah i'm I'm interested to hear it yeah sure so I'm I'm not a religious person. I'm very much not a religious person. I would say I'm a spiritual person, but I, I identify as an agnostic. And the reason I identify as an agnostic is because I I believe that we're too stupid to figure all of this stuff out right now. I, I don't think any of us can know anything for sure. Yeah. That's how I use the term agnostic. Uh, as far as invoking the name of Jesus, maybe that carries some significance. But I'm not going to say, oh, it's because they're demons. This is clearly clearly a religious issue. No, I, I think it goes far beyond any conventional definitions of religion or of aliens or anything like that. It's 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 a greater overarching energy that kind of encompasses all that we know. It's it's intertwined with us somehow, and we don't really know how that all works for sure. And I, I think there are people currently doing good work to figure out how that all ties together. And that's kind of why I've been following Tom DeLong. I feel he's very heavily involved in that. So what does it mean for people like you and your father? And you mentioned that it seems like it's genetic, which I completely, uh, I agree with. So what does that mean though for you guys? (laughs) Uh, You know, this is a terrible answer, but how the hell do I know? No, um, actually, that's the best answer ever, and more people, yeah. more people should use that answer. <laughs> I, I, I don't, I, I don't feel special in the sense that I, 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 I don't feel I've been chosen for anything. I don't feel I'm superior to anyone else. Uh, the, the, the only thing that I do feel very strongly is that, for whatever reason, I, I am. I, I possess I possess a very strong receiver for these things. Let, let's just call it that. Mm-hmm. And I believe my father does as well. Uh, trying to think of more experiences he's had. I, 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 I believe he's had more things in line with the typical alien abduction experience. Uh, he's, he's seen a lot of things. Now, I, I actually wish I had him here sitting next to me to go, yo, dad, you know, tell me about right. some of this stuff. <laughs> right. Yeah. So, uh, when you were talking about the yellow orbs in front of your parents' vehicle, I mean, what was the culmination of that? I mean, did they have missing time? Was there anything weird past that? Or did they just see them, they flew off, or your parents drove off? What was the case there? Uh, you know, I'd have to ask my father again, but the bottom line is, you know, that they were, that they were drinking and drugging. This was the seventies. They were on their way to a party, I think. Um, so I, I don't trust any recollections too terribly, 
but okay. I, I really do think it's interesting that my father remembers this clearly, but my mother does not. And I've, I've had other, there, there, there have been other experiences where some people just seem to be more receptive of this stuff. And then it just kind of fades away. I, I remember you, you, you had best on recently. Um, uh, I, I can't remember. I can't remember his name, but it was, it was the brothers with the, uh, the unicorn. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So th- things like that. And also my current roommate, Chris, uh, he had an incident where he saw this massive sort of fractal cloud formation that he believes was some sort of UFO. Like it, it wasn't natural, whatever he saw. And at the time his father saw it and now his father just doesn't remember it at all. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. See, why would they care really? Right. I mean, yeah. we can identify it anyway, really. I mean, we can, we can, um, we can describe it. But we can't identify it. So why in the hell would they care who can remember it? Yeah, and what's what's really interesting is I, I shouldn't talk about this a whole lot. I'll try to be as vague as possible. But I believe at the time they were both government contractors. Mm. Yeah. So they were maybe, and, and don't, you do not have to answer this, of course. This is just my mind working through its process. So they were maybe somewhere on a base or something that they might be testing this kind of a thing or it just happened to be they were government contractors and they were shopping at Albertsons or something. No, that they were actually driving home. Okay. Oh, from yeah. said job. I, I, I don't have that information. I don't know, but I, I just know that they were driving home and that's when this was, yeah. Mm. yeah. So it looked like a fractal cloud. Uh, well, uh, the way my roommate described it was as a giant white tree, just, spreading oh. infinitely out through the sky a giant white tree yeah but but not like you know coming from the earth just like just there. starting just, in the sky yeah. and just expanding yeah just so it's it's going horizontal and expanding out horizontally yes correct oh goodness what yeah how is that i've i've never seen anything like that I, I've, I've seen a couple of ufos and stuff but nothing to write home about no oh, well hang on what did you see though Oh, I, I, I consider this boring in comparison. When I was about eight years old, I was laying... Look, I, I was a weird eight-year-old, okay? I was laying on top, of, uh, on top of my grandmother's car, actually, watching the clouds. And uh, I, I saw this silver disc that flew into a cloud and did not come out the other end. That's mm. the one that sticks out the most in my mind. Yeah. Uh, there was another incident I had when I was older, around the same age that I saw the uh, the, the shadows, around 18, 17, uh, where I was, I, I wasn't fishing, but I was just kind of relaxing at a dam where I would fish sometimes, and I was just watching the clouds. This was early morning, like maybe 6, 7 in the morning, and I saw this thing, and I, I, I don't expect you to in any way be an anime fan, but uh, I, I don't suppose you've ever watched, uh, it, why can I not say Neon Genesis Evangelion? There we go. <laughs> well, it sounds like a tongue twister to me. Uh, yes. So I, 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 not, I don't though. suppose I you're familiar. Not. Okay. So very, very interesting anime. Very interesting sort of spiritual religious undertones, um, but also aliens and stuff. And the, the aliens are called angels. But anyway... There's, there's one of these angels, which is basically a giant, shiny pyramid uh, sort of being that just sort of floats along. That's basically what I saw. So, and, I, I mean, it, it, it was moving like a normal aircraft, but you don't normally see, you know, pyramidal sort of things just casually cruising through the sky. So it was like 6 or 7 a.m. was the... I'm assuming the sun is just coming up kind of a thing? Uh, sun was up, but it was I think it was a weekday. Most people were at work. There wasn't a lot of traffic or anything. And how how far was it from you, if you could guess? I know it's hard, but... Uh, that's that's difficult. Um, like, like a low-flying aircraft, I guess you could say. Okay. Yeah. How, how about the size? Uh, Again, that's, difficult, that's difficult, but... Like, like, like let's, let's say... Let's say it was maybe anywhere between 
10,000 to 20,000 feet. It was not flying max altitude. Uh, it, it, it was fairly big for that size, I guess you'd say. Like, it was maybe about the length of your standard, you know, 747. Mm. But you, you have to remember this thing has vertical mass as well. Right. It's so, shaped a little bit differently than what we see yeah. in a yeah. yeah. So a pyramid shape. That's interesting. Yep. So, Justin, what sorts of things, and pardon this question, but what sorts of things, you know, prior to, like, when you were eight and you saw that that disc, it went into the cloud and it didn't come out, what kinds of things were you watching on TV? You know, did you have any prior impressions of this stuff? Were your parents talking about it? Anything like that? Well, uh, eight years old. What was I doing at eight years old? <laughs> that's scary that that's a difficult question to me now um, no it's okay i think all of us would have a little i don't know, like well let's pause and think about that i'm the same way uh i i, I was definitely very big into sci-fi I'm, I'm not gonna deny that i i played a lot of computer games lots of sci-fi there uh i i i was big on yeah i was big on the whole you know alien thing so it, it i can't say that that wasn't true uh, I, I, all I can really say is that whatever this thing was, it went out into the clouds and it didn't come out the other end. So, so you think that aliens are are out there, in, like, and I put that in quotations, quote unquote, out there, but they're part of something with the shadow people and the and the Bigfoot and the whatever we see in the woods and all that. So maybe we can't separate them as some sort of a an extraterrestrial being coming here to either contact us or annihilate us something uh, it's not that simple yeah I, I i follow tom DeLong and jacques valet in that uh, that philosophy that this is this is bigger than that what do you think that means for us though <sighs> that's so hard to say uh i i, I mean the, the obviously the, the obvious implication here is that what, what whatever these things are, they have some kind of a vested interest in either humanity or Earth or both. That's all I can really... I, I can't do any more without more information. Is it kind of dark for me to say that, you know, when you watch... Uh, I quite like the newer version of War of the Worlds uh, with... Tom Cruise, I, I kind of like that movie, and it's a little dark of me to say that, but part of me is like, I think, you know, it would be kind of interesting to have at least a portion of that happen, so that uh, the world kind of wakes up, and we stop bickering over stupid political crap, and everything that we're so worried about, and people that are like, oh my god, what are the Kardashians doing today? And I'm like, you know what? <laughs> You guys would just all shut the hell up really quickly if you had something. Well, I mean, isn't that what uh, is it Reagan? I, I, said I mean, that? maybe, maybe, maybe if we were asking if what you know, what what, what are the Kardashians doing today instead of what are the Kardashians doing today? Yeah, we, we might have a different view on yeah, things. Yeah, I'm, I'm hoping you're a Star Trek fan. Yeah, so. yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. It's like the the perspective of our day and age is so skewed now and it, we're so just i i don't i don't get it sometimes and I'm, part of me is like we could use a good uh apocalypse of some sort i know that's so dark to say that but i i, I don't I, actually think it's dark it, it, it's a guilty pleasure of mine i i do fantasize about this stuff um i i, I have a good friend of mine the same friend i was talking to about uh about the shadow people who made me realize that, you know, oh, oh crap, that's the same stuff I sunk into when I died. Uh, he has this very interesting view of uh, humans should not be fighting each other. That there's no reason for, for humanity to be taking up arms against each, each other. And that yeah. he, he, and I'm, I'm just not as devout as he is in this regard, I guess, but he seems to believe that there's, you know, going to be some kind of a reckoning coming within our lifetimes. And it, yeah, th that'd be cool. I'd like to see it happen. I'm not convinced it will. Uh, something him and I were talking about recently, and I'd, I'd like your take on this, is that I feel around 
back in the like 2008 to 2012 era, there was a certain energy about things. Everyone was sort of really excited. Everything was kind of leading up to something. And we were all told about, you know, either it's going to be the end of the world in 2012 or there's going to be this big paradigm shift and everything's going to be great. And in retrospect, I think something did change in 2012, but I don't think it's what anyone talked about or was expecting. I feel when 2012 hit, right around that, that era, 2012, 2013, all the life kind of sucked out of everything. Like, suddenly everything got very dull. No, it... It is. And in fact, I think that just now we're kind of seeing maybe a resurgence in, yes. Uh, yes. you know, uh, the whole Amuamua thing. And then even, I think it was, it has to be NASA. Who else would it be? They're like, we missed an opportunity here to study this thing and go see what it was. And maybe it wasn't just a rock. And I just, I think that there's this kind of excitement going on out there and yeah, I've, I've ever ever since like i, I want to say august does, does that sound right to you august of this year i i think there's definitely been kind of this more excitement in the air and i think that it, it a lot of people think it has to do with just aliens or just this or just that but i think it's um it's like a, a bigger and a more open acceptance to things and like maybe yeah. something might be coming to where we're not all so crazy and out there and weird. And our little I, freak I think, flag might be flying a little higher with other people that might join our, our ranks. That's why I'm so obsessed with Tom DeLong right now. Because I, I think if any information is going to come out, it's going to be through him. Uh, I, I don't like putting all my eggs in one basket like that. But I, I think he's on to something. And I, I just hope that but whatever powers that be let it happen. I, I feel like we were on the verge. Like, everything from 2008 up to 2012 was building up to something, and then that something just never happened. We've just kind of had a lull until now. I mean, are you a little worried that Tom DeLong is, in fact, being fed disinformation? I... I, I, I don't know. I, I can't know, and I don't know. Uh, if he is being fed this info, then I still think that even if this guy is being fed this info, okay, this is still someone communicating with people who obviously know things, Yeah. and information is still being disseminated. Even if what we're getting is not the truth, better than it's, nothing. it's something, yeah. Yes. No, I, I agree with you. I do, I do. Uh, and I'm not blaming Tom DeLong at all for that, because if I was in his position, of course, I'd be like, hey, well, sure, whatever you want to tell me, I'll, I'll soak it in, I'll disseminate it as, as I'm allowed to, right, without getting into trouble, because we, we've heard of some pretty awful things happening to other people. Now, a lot of that's not proven, but a lot of people like to say, well, they were killed because of such and such, you know, um, I, I hope that's not the case, but it, it does make me wonder. Yeah. Because I, he, I, I he's, think, a, he's a perfect mouthpiece for all of it. Yeah, I, I, think, I think he's an honest man doing good work. Whether that work is actually honest, wh wh whether he knows that work is honest or not, not I, I can't say. Yeah. Well, right. And it, but like I said, I, well, I hope that it's not his fault. I, I would like to think I, I hope it's, that well. he's coming yeah. from it from a, a truthful standpoint and being like hey here's what i learned i to my best knowledge i have vetted these people or my people's people have vetted you know however that works considering who he's working with i'm sure that he gets information from people that there's no way that he could ever know their names ever yeah right yeah. and I, I i think i think he paints a very good uh very good, um, uh, what's the term look here? It, it, well, he, he paints a very good picture for why this is done, why this is being done the way that it is being done, which yeah. is that these, these people, it's not that they don't want to tell us, they just don't know how. And if he really is being used as an honest mouthpiece for that information, great, we need it. Uh, but yeah, I, I don't want to get too off track because, you know, I'm, I'm not, 
my, my name is not Tom DeLong. I'm pretty sure your name is not Tom DeLong. Mm. So we've, we've had our Tom DeLong fanboy moment, or, or at least I have. So, <laughs> no, I, th- I think he's serving a good purpose. Uh, I hope he's as forthcoming as one can be. Uh, I just, it's scary because of the fact that, that I know that he's getting fed information that, I mean, I really do feel this way. I I know he's getting fed information that's probably trying to maybe muddle some of it and keep a little, you know, there's always a a truth muddled into the, uh, the bullshit basically. Yeah. Yeah. So, and and that's just the name of the game. Let's go back for a moment, if you don't mind, to when I was mm. eight years old, because there, there's another experience I've jotted down here, which I didn't remember until I started writing all this stuff down, was, uh, and God, this is such a freaky experience looking back on it, but um, you, you know those little, like, you know, plastic slides you get for kids, little, you know, you go up the stairs, you slide down them, little mm-hmm. castle things, I, I had one of those in my backyard, and for for whatever reason, I, I was a weird kid, like I said. My mother gave me a set of headphones. This would have been like late 90s, early 2000s, probably late 90s. And I, I decided to go outside and sit down next to this thing for whatever reason, put the headphones on, and stick the headphone jack into some crevice in the, the you know, the slide castle thing. And uh, I I heard things. What did you hear? Uh, I I, I wish I could tell you. I heard voices. I heard many, many, many voices all talking over each other. Not not loud, just muffled. Uh, Just just like being in a busy supermarket, I guess you could say, but a little bit subdued. Just lots and lots of voices. And then uh, you you decided to unplug from that, or they just stopped, or do you remember? Oh, I I, I was a very inquisitive child. I, I experimented with this. I unplugged it. Voices stopped. Plugged it back in. Voices started up again. What what the hell do I do with that? But you don't remember any context or what they were saying. Nope. I I just remember the voices. People are gonna roll their eyes right now because I brought this up before, but um. Have you watched the movie Banshee Chapter? You know, I haven't, and I've been looking for a good movie to watch. I would, well, I, okay, so here's the funny thing. It's not like the best movie, like, I've ever seen. It's just for our purposes uh, and what we're interested in, it's just a point of reference for me. So it's all about uh, DMT the drug DMT people oh, interesting. take it. Yes. And if you would watch it and just, you know, email me and, and see what you thought, I would love that because your last story made me think of this and the DMT, what it does is it supposedly makes you into a receiver, right? Um, it's not always a, a good thing or usually it's not in this case for this particular, and I know it's a movie, but I'm just saying um, your experience made me think of this because I'm kind of going, well, as you said earlier, it seems like there's other things going on to where only certain people can receive said information, right? Yeah. Uh, I think that if there was another kid sitting next to that slide with the headphones and they plug it into whatever, they wouldn't hear anything. I, I, I don't think anyone would have heard the same right. thing. I agree. Right. So uh, I'm just saying that I think that some people have this natural ability a uh, gift, whatever you want to call it, or some people might call it a curse, right? Uh, to hear certain things. And I think that in the movie, they were getting at the fact, no matter who you are, if you weren't sensitive to this, you could take the DMT, pure DMT, and that you would then become a receiver. Right. Uh, you know, it's interesting you should mention that. I've always had a fascination with psychedelics Mm -hmm. i've never god this is so it's shameful to admit but i've never had the the backbone i guess you would say to do that with my anxiety issues and my heart issues and the reason i say that is because i i know these substances are not dmt 
acid, whatever, n- none of that is intrinsically bad for your heart. But what that can absolutely do is you can have bad trips. And bad trip is going to mean a lot of adrenaline. Uh, and a lot yes. of adrenaline is not going to be good for me. No, no. So it's, it's it, it worries me a little bit. Yeah. Which wouldn't be good for you. Yeah. No, and, and no, that's completely understandable. And I have a close uh, contact, a friend of mine, that has actually taken pure DMT. and Oh, my he, God. Yes, he has said that it is the... And Joe Rogan has said this too. He's only, I, I haven't listened to it. I don't know for sure. He's only done it once. Obviously, he's done it at least once, but maybe twice, three times. I don't know. But he says if he finds another pure source, he'll do it again. But going back to my other contact, he says that it is the most enlightening, fascinating, incredible thing he's done. Plus, the absolutely hands down most terrifying thing he's ever done in his life he says he was you know quote unquote out for probably 15 20 minutes but it felt like hours yeah yeah that's generally what i've heard yeah yes so Uh, now what's what's, the only sorry to cut you off no that's okay uh what's the name of this movie banshee banshee chapter and it used to be on netflix but unfortunately they took it off of there so you might actually have to buy the the DVD or something. I don't, I, I don't I, even know. If I have streaming. I have ways. I'm not concerned about that. Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, you're right. It's probably on freaking YouTube or something. But yeah, Banshee chapter. And I would just like your take on that. Um, no, absolutely. I will watch that and I will get back to that on you. Yeah. Back yeah. to you on that. <laughs> yeah, I, because that and it's uh, something I brought up before because there's several people in the movie that take this quote-unquote pure dmt and they have these trips they they become receivers and uh it doesn't always turn out so well robin hood is an investing app that lets you buy and sell stocks etfs options and cryptos all commission free it's a non-intimidating way for stock market newcomers to invest for the first time with true confidence. Unlike other brokerages who charge up to $10 for every trade, Robinhood doesn't charge commission fees, trade stocks, and keep all of your profits. It features easy-to-understand charts and market data. You can place a trade in just four taps on your smartphone. Learn how to invest as you build your portfolio and Discover new stocks and track favorite companies with personalized newsfeed. Robinhood is giving listeners a free stock like Apple, Ford, or Sprint to help build your portfolio. Sign up at thefray.robinhood.com. That's thefray.robinhood.com. I'll tell you what I'm going to do for you. I'm going to read off the list of stuff that I've got here. And you can just pick one last thing that you'd like to talk talk yes, about because thank we've, you. we've gone over some of this. Now, th- these are very uh, vague cliff notes here. So all is interconnected. We've kind of, uh, God, what's the word I'm looking for? Touched on that. Uh, conscious thought lets them in. I'm not sure we've gotten into that too much. Shadows and death, same substance. We've talked about that. 333, three, three, number of affirmation. 333 three, three is a real interesting topic for me. Let's, Aragon. Let's do 333. 333, three. Three, three, okay. And let, yeah, let's cross so, that off, and then the other ones we'll bring you back on for. Okay, cool. Thank so, you. So, 333, three, three. Uh, this is a number that follows me everywhere. Everywhere, Shannon. I can't escape it. I cannot escape this number. And for a long time, it creeped me the hell out. Uh, first happened when I was 14 years old. I think a lot of this stuff first began when I hit 14 years old. Uh, that's when I first started having my sleep paralysis experiences and other things, but three, 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 it's, I, I don't know for sure what it means yet. I've, I've looked into numerology and everything uh, I, I've been told it's a sign that, you know, angels are watching over you or whatever. And I, I kind of feel 
it's hard to find sources for this stuff that are not too woo-woo for me, if that makes any sense. Oh, that, believe me, considering what I've I've been looking into, it, it makes complete sense that you say woo-woo. Yeah. Voice. So, I, I, I just... Are, are you familiar with any anyone who has had, you know, any experience with this number? Have you had any experiences with it yourself? Uh, maybe if you start getting into it, but off the top of my head, uh, 333 doesn't really ring any bells. Right, because this gets weird. It's not just limited to me. It starts affecting people around me. So... I, I had this very close friend. You could almost call her family. I, I don't mind naming her. Uh, Mara. And Mara and I, uh, we, we used to play this game together, a game that I work on. And uh, th- th- there's these things that you use to repair your ship in that game. Uh, nanobots. And uh, I, I just happened to have you know, shot at her with my guns in this video game. And this was just after telling her about, yeah, this number's been following me around lately. And she used her repairs, and she went, holy shit, Justin, scan me. And she had 333 of them left. So that was my first experience with, whoa, this is a little strange. Mm -hmm. Uh, Since then, this project I work on, I work on it with a friend of mine, him I'm not going to name, but uh, we have both begun to have this this experience and what what we've derived from it as far as we can tell is that 333 is kind of like a number of affirmation that we're sort of on the right track when 333 shows up hmm. like yeah keep going keep doing keep doing what you're doing you're on the right path and i i don't know i find that really interesting and it's one of the things that when whenever i I, I get in the slumps sometimes where I'm like, yeah, when, when, when I die, I'm going to be dead. None of this means anything. But then things like these happen. It's just like, I can't really discount all this stuff, can I? I mean, what are some of the other affirmations that you've had with 333? Oh, I'm trying to think of specific examples, but it's it's more of a things are going well. You're doing the right thing. If, if that makes sense. And that, that doesn't just apply to the game development stuff I've been talking about. It goes for everything. And anytime I see the number come off, it's kind of like an okay, things are going to be all right. I mean, do you ever have that come up as a, a time? You know, like people see 11-11. Shannon, I, I have it come up as everything. I have it come up as times. I have it come up as addresses. I have it come up as parts of randomly generated numbers. It's everywhere. But you feel like that's an affirmation for you. It's a positive thing. You're on yeah. the right path. Yeah, it, it, it's not positive in the sense of, oh, good things are going to happen, but more like, keep steady. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. No, so, and, and you know what's great about you bringing that up is that I will hear from other people that, oh, yeah, totally, I get that too. And I will... I'll let you know about that, of course. I'll forward I'd be that to you. really interested in hearing yeah. about that because I, I have a hard time believing that's limited to me if, you know, I talk about it and then suddenly, oh, other right. people are experiencing this. Yeah. No, I will so, forward you any feedback that I get from this for sure. Yeah. And I, I just want to briefly go over the, the stuff we didn't talk about just so you know what there's still left to talk about if you want to bring me back on. Yes, please do. I have had encounters with my dead grandfather my dead grandmother actually no I, I shouldn't say that the encounter I had with my grandmother was before she passed but her mind was not there mm. so grandpa grandma my cat I've had encounters with beings during sleep paralysis which have almost always been negative and extreme, extremely malevolent uh and then there's the whole thing about conscious thought letting them in, and I, I can give you some references on that. I've spoken to people who have been on shows. I think he might have been on your show. I can't remember his last name. Chris something. Uh, he's up in Michigan, I think. He talked about the aliens outside his house. Was that you? Oh, um, You don't have a last name? I, I might have him on Facebook. Let me check real fast. 
Chris, I want to say it was W something. Yeah, there we go. Chris Wolf. Oh, yes. 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 I, I actually, his experiences were so interesting that I reached out and talked to him a oh, little good, bit. good, good. He's a good yeah. guy. Yeah, he's he's a pretty decent dude. Uh, but yeah, he, he's of the mindset that I am, that it's thinking certain things can let these, yeah. can let this phenomena in. That's something I'd like to touch on more for sure. But uh, yeah, I assume we're almost out of time by now. Yeah, so I mean, any closing thoughts before uh, we close out this session? Closing thoughts. Um, I, I guess my only real closing thought is that I would really love to be able to network with people on this, but I also don't want to just dump my personal info info out there. Yeah, and yeah, I, I guess I don't really know how to do that in a good way. Here's the thing, uh, and I've done this before. Uh, I don't know if you've listened to Pam's episodes on the Fay, but what she did is she created just a, a very uh, simple email address. You can, you know, name it whatever at gmail.com. And if I get any correspondence, I will forward it to, you know, the information and say, hey, you can email Justin at blah, 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 at gmail.com. That is the easiest way to do that. And you can come up with, I mean, there's almost endless uh, options for creating a Gmail address or, or Yahoo, whatever you want. But, um, you know, if you're not doing the Facebook thing and the Instagram and all this other stuff, which I envy you sometimes that I have to do all that. Uh, but I would say go ahead and create one of those. And then I can actually put that in show notes. Uh, and if you create it in time, I could go mention it on the episode before it airs. So. Yeah, I, I might go ahead and set up a, a a proton mail for that since it's a little more secure. Proton, okay, yeah, just uh, you know, shoot me an email, let me know what the email is, and I can easily put that in show notes for people to get a hold of you. Yeah, I, I can I can do that. I can get you that that sigil. I guess we're calling it S- sigil is a good word for it. Yes. And yes. Uh, I I could also ask if you would like me to. If two of the people I've mentioned during the episode would like to hop on, namely uh, my roommate Chris yep. and my, my other friend who I've left a uh, kind of little bit, well, I've, I've basically omitted his name entirely, uh, the, the, the one I spoke to about the shadow people. I would I love that. And yeah. uh, just, just to make sure that you know and that your friend knows, we already know who Chris is, but if your f- other friend wants to remain nameless we can we can keep that going i have no yeah, problem absolutely. with yeah yeah so uh i will i will shoot you an email and we will keep in touch yes. sound good thank you so much justin thanks for absolutely. contacting me no n- not at all i'm glad i finally i don't want to say i finally got this off my chest but something i've been discussing with you know close friends and it it feels yeah. good to finally get it out there so well, yeah I- thanks for having I, I appreciate you being brave enough to do so. Thank you so much. You know, it's not really an issue of bravery. Uh, I hear a lot of people say, oh, I'm, I'm afraid of this stuff. I don't want to let it in. I don't want to let it get me. Honestly, I'm fascinated by it. And it's probably going to be the death of me. But at least it'll be an interesting <laughs> way to go. I, I can completely just side with you on that. I'm always just kind of going, man, if I could like hop on a Ouija board and get this stuff to just... I want it. Let's go. Let's do yeah, this. Yeah, let's do it. Yes. High five on that. Yeah. Uh, you, you can't see me, but you know, I'm, I'm fiving right now. <laughs> I, I I am too. We're going to do the air, fi- high, uh, air high five through Skype. That was a tongue twister right there. Yeah, a little bit. Well, thanks, Justin. Well, we'll talk soon then. Yeah. Thank you, Shannon. And you have bet. a good night. You too. Thank you so much. Well, I'm so and so. I was given this name by my parents. I've been to such and such a college. I've done these things in my profession. I produce a little bark. Buddha says, forget it. There's nothing. That's some story. That's all gone. That's all past. I want to see the real you you are now. Well, nobody knows who that is. Because we don't uh, know ourselves except through listening to our echoes and consulting our memories. But then there's a real evil, and that again leads us back to this question. Uh, who are you? That is the real evil. We shall see how.
how they play with this and that. By the cards to get you to come out of your shell and find out who you really are. If 
you think you are, you are linking your moments up in the chain. And this is what binds you to the wheel of birth and death. But when you know that every moment in which you are is the only moment, this comes into Zen, the master will say to somebody, oh, get up and walk across the room. And he comes back and says, where are your footprints? They've gone. So where are you? Who are you? When we are asked who we are, we usually give a kind of recitation of a history. Straight, 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 straight.